Uh, my name is Rafi Karabi. I'm living in Paris, France, and um, I've been in the cloud um, ecosystem since 2017. And I've been working with Sistic um, since three years right now, um, helping customers in Middle East and, Afri um, and uh, Europe um, migrating to a cloud and adopting cloud native uh, security. Um, for those who don't know Sistic, uh, we provide a cloud native uh, platform for security and observability. Um, we provide protection from source to run, and uh, we are the company behind uh, Falco, which is the threat detection engine for containers, Kubernetes, um, and uh, Cloudia. Here is my LinkedIn, my Twitter. Please feel free uh, to add me. Um, okay, that's uh, about me. I would like to know a little bit about you. So my first question, uh, who is here for, for the first time? Awesome, yeah, but most of you. So um, my second question is, uh, who knows one of those uh, acronyms, CWPP, CSPM, et cetera? Yeah, few of you. Okay, uh, two of them. Oh, just one, <laughs> three. <laughs> All of them. Oh, yeah, okay, nice. You are, you are on the right spot. That's what we'll be talking about today, so that's great. Um, so we have a package agenda today. Um, I will start by, um, uh, describing and explaining those cloud um, native security acronyms. Um, then we go into the anatomy of the cloud native application, uh, the life cycle as well. Uh, I will describe as well uh, the cloud native security platform building blocks and the attack vectors that comes uh, on different layer cloud containers and uh, Kubernetes and containers. Uh, we'll deep dive into patterns and practices, best practices, and uh, finally, uh, we go through the persona and workflow. So we have this packet agenda. So the idea behind this talk when you start like coming either like from development background or come from security, and you start uh, moving your workloads to the cloud, um, you got like a lot of acronyms that is coming from like conferences, web webinars, uh, blogs, etc. Uh, and you feel a little bit lost and confused. Uh, so the idea, we go through these uh, acronyms, explain what they mean, and then uh, we explain the workflow that you have to implement. So um, talking about cloud native application here, uh, we have uh, the main business value, which is uh, mainly the workflows that you're developing. Um, you have mainly maybe some, some workflows that you migrate through VMs to cloud, uh, plus containers, plus moving um, as well to serverless. And this is working on top of platforms. Um, Kubernetes is the most common. You may using some container as a service and it comes with some, uh, I would say, uh, support or edge services like data, you want to, to store data either on like buckets, uh, databases, management uh, kind of uh, log monitoring, identity and access to provide uh, access to your uh, services and your um, uh, platforms. And finally, network and security. So in order like to talk about security, you are not just uh, securing your workload, but you are securing the full uh, ecosystem. Um, this is, uh, will bring uh, us to the first acronym, which is CWPP. And uh, CWPP uh, stands for Cloud Workload Protection Platform. Uh, we are talking here about the security of uh, workloads, either uh, containers, uh, serverless, or VMs. And um, it's mainly about vulnerability management plus threat detection plus hardening. This is like, and a little bit of compliance. This is like the main uh, things that um, you would be thinking about when you are thinking about a CWPP solution. Um, yeah, and this is the main focus of CWP solution. The second uh, one is uh, cloud security posture management, and we are assessing here uh, cloud security configuration, um, mainly protecting the cloud control plane, plus assessing the configuration of the instances and the managed services um, that you are that use, you are using as a part of your application. So here you can see that uh, this is the platform plus uh, all the, the managed service except the identity I'll talk later. So uh, the next one is uh, KSPM and it stands for Kubernetes Security Posture Management. And it's simply a subset of CSPM. So uh, because there is a lot of workloads moving to Kubernetes, like it's becoming the de facto uh, platform to run workloads. So um, we have like a kind of dedicated platforms that and solution that look after uh, Kubernetes and just think about it as a subset of CSPM. 
Um, the next one is um, cloud infrastructure entitlement management. And here I'm mainly looking after my identity and access management, excessive permission, uh, roles and uh, service account that I'm not using or they are excessive, misconfigured, so on. So this is mainly uh, around identity and access. And um, we have as well um, cloud detection and response. And this is mainly more wider than the trend detection that we have inside the CWPP because we are trying to look from end to end. Uh, the CWPP is mainly looking on workloads, uh, but we are seeing like most, more and more sophisticated uh, cloud attack. They start from containers going to the cloud services and uh, vice versa. So the idea here that uh, I will have uh, a unique solution that can track uh, all this, this activity in, in a single solution. And the last acronym is CNAP. And CNAP is, uh, stands for Cloud Native Application Protection Platform. And it's simply a combination of those uh, solutions, CSPM, C, uh, CWPP, and CDN. And the idea here that you have a like, single solution that combine everything because integrating all this data that coming from these different uh, sources uh, make building protection most, uh, more sophisticated. Um, yeah, in a nutshell, if you go like uh, to the building blocks of uh, CNAP uh, platform, uh, we have, um, as I mentioned, CSPM or uh, KSPM, which is uh, mainly about uh, vulnerability management of those workload, uh, misconfiguration, um, infrastructure as a code security as well. Uh, we have the inventory part, which is coming at the very first uh, stages, and we have the threat detection and compliance uh, frameworks something like um, you need to be compliant with industry best um, uh, best uh, best practices like CIS uh, benchmark or maybe you are in a regulated um, industry that you need like to be uh, compliant with the FedRAMP or uh, PCI or HIPAA and so on. So this is like the main CSPM part. CWPP uh, all around uh, workloads, vulnerability management, uh, threat detection in runtime uh, plus uh, serverless security as well. Uh, seem uh, all around um, detect of excessive uh, permission, and finally CDR, which is uh, giving you uh, a full uh, a full spectrum of of uh, detection and um, and response uh, across your cloud environments. Um, this is about those acronyms. So in the next uh, few slides, uh, we go through the attack vectors because it's really important uh, to understand how. Uh, how we can attack those uh, um, platforms and workloads. And from there, uh, we can build our strategy. Um, the f I will talk first about cloud attack vectors. Um, we have, like this is the build, uh, building, big building blocks of uh, cloud environment. We have this layer of identity network and control plan that is like the foundation of a cloud platform. Plus you have the data that is really uh, um, like um, really, um, used for for you plus server and serverless. Um, and the first one is network breaches. This is like the most common when you create some services that are misconfigured, An attacker can use any scanning tool and scan your environment over the internet and get access. Um, the second one is unauthorized uh, resource access, uh, a kind of example of bucket that you put it public with like uh, private data. Um, data exfiltration uh, kind of um, putting, for example, a database password inside container, someone who access to the container, he gain access to these uh, passwords and then be able to connect uh, to those services uh, remotely. Uh, cloud security misconfiguration, um, it's all about misconfiguration of your uh, service, for example, creating a Kubernetes cluster with a public IP, which is not uh, mandatory for your environment. And finally, uh, vulnerability exploit just uh, deploying a container or a workload on VM with vulnerabilities. So this is the most common attack uh, vectors for cloud. Uh, let's go with the Kubernetes attack vector. The first thing is a misconfiguration of um, the Kubernetes control plane, mainly the API server or the ETCD API when someone don't block the access from outside. So this is something that is really common. Um, the second one is dashboard misconfiguration. If you deploy Kubernetes with a dashboard that is open to public as well. 
Um, malicious containers image in registry, um, yeah, very common. Uh, some people are pushing useful images, but with malware and other sort of like uh, tools that they can you can deploy it by mistake, and then they gain access to your environment. Kill Pro Mining is like a big example here. Uh, application with um, exploitable vulnerability as well, and um, gain access to secrets when you deploy um, a workload and you're using, for example, uh, Kubernetes secrets, and then um, someone can uh, gain access to that. And um, finally, Docker uh, daemon misconfiguration, when someone can hook on the Docker socket and uh, start uh, doing some stuff. So for containers workload, we have um, a set of uh, attacks. The most common are like having your uh, container engine or the host that you are um, deploying Docker uh, vulnerable or out to date. Uh, secondly, uh, vulnerable application, uh, very common. Um, exposed uh, container engine uh, that someone can hook into. Uh, and secure image uh, registry, the same way that we have actually in uh, Kubernetes. Um, privileged containers, when a container can hook into um, um, the system onto the kernel because it has privileged access, uh, running as a root, as a famous example. Um, misconfigured container, um, a container uh, would be able uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to get uh, into the container engine um, and uh, as well privileged escalation on host. Uh, and finally, and sufficient network isolation when you can move from one container to another because you are not putting this uh, isolation on, uh, on the network uh, policy. So that's the most common uh, attacks, I would say, for a container. Um, okay, um, we are moving to uh, patterns and best practices. Uh, but uh, before that, let's take a look at the life cycle of a cloud native application. We have mainly five phase uh, code build, provision, uh, deploy, and run. And the code phase, uh, what we are producing, we are producing, let's say, our business logic, plus the dependency that we are, they are grappled usually by developer. We are delivering a kind of a manifest for my uh, workloads, uh, like Docker files, um, application packages, Helm charts, uh, Terraform for the infrastructure. Then I have this continuous integration, which is mainly building my image. And from there, I'm provisioning my infrastructure and I'm doing some configuration. Um, then on the deploying side, I'm building a, a kind of either continuous deployment or continuous delivery pipeline. And finally, on the run, what I'm doing, I'm monitoring uh, my workload, troubleshooting in case of issue, and I'm doing a kind of incident and response. So this is like the, the, the big blocks for uh, the life cycle. So within the next uh, slide, we'll take a look at the different controls. And this is coming in iteration. So you need to, to implement a kind of continuous uh, security and compliance. Um, yeah, within this um, slide, I will explain which is the different checkpoints that you need to put on different phase or like best practices. Um, on the code phase, you can do a kind of brief detection uh, based on the artifact that you are delivering. A kind of like, uh, um, if you are like building a Helm chart, you can hook into, see if there is any of um, like container running as a root, misconfiguration and so on. And you can as well uh, block risky configuration, um, means that if there is something going to your Git repository, you just scan it and then you can block that. On the build phase, uh, we are building uh, the image so we can do a kind of inline scanner, CICD scanner, plus uh, having registry scanning and host scanning for Kubernetes host. And we can uh, prioritize based uh, in use vulnerabilities. This is something I, um, I will explain in details uh, next. Uh, then we have the deploy phase when we have a kind of admission controller um, and I can uh, block risky images and I can as well block uh, risky configuration uh, for my services. Um, on the run phase, we have like three big uh, building blocks, configuration management, uh, the CSPM compliance stuff. So I can detect all this configuration from the runtime uh, and I, I'm doing as well cloud inventory. So I need to see, um, to list all my resources and be able to assess my resources against the risks I'm facing. Um, identity the same way on the identity, uh, we are assessing uh, all these resources and we are uh, trying to do uh, le least privilege. And as well, 
we deprioritize and based on in use permission. So if one permission is not in use, I just like um, like disable it. Um, threat detection for the cloud, um, we build some patterns on that, and then we do uh, workload uh, runtime security. Um, yeah, one of the famous um, projects you can use Falco. And uh, on the incident response, you need to capture what's happened in order to do forensics, uh, plus as well uh, block malicious uh, containers or uh, processes, a kind of a, if I'm a contain my container is doing something um, a little bit risky, I can either like pause the container or like um, do a kind of sandbox or just kill the container if there is like some exfiltration of data and so on. So um, this is mainly uh, what we have here um, um, as, uh, as different um, checkpoints. Um, so I will go in detail as with um, the container in use vulnerability prioritization. Um, this is really important because um, everyone who is looking, uh, who is in security field uh, for a while, he know that there is a lot of like force positive and engineer fatigue. So you need like to prioritize what matter for you. And the pattern behind this uh, that you have to prioritize uh, and fix those practices that are really uh, in use. Um, because every one of us know that developers like bring like define some packages that maybe they are not using. And how we are doing this, uh, we are doing this uh, with applying a multi-level uh, vulnerability focus if the package is in use or not exploitable and has a fix. And we can apply this uh, for both uh, containers and Kubernetes host. Um, how this works is, uh, let's say I have an image here uh, in my registry uh, with three uh, uh, vulnerable packages. And I'm deploying this uh, to my runtime and I can see on my runtime that uh, two of those uh, packages are not loaded in the runtime. So uh, the real risk here would be for me, uh, the CV that is in the runtime. Um, yeah, that's the real risk. How do you can implement this workflow? The first thing I'd be, I'd be like assessing all the vulnerability in the runtime. I will check if they are in use or not. And uh, from there, I can check if they are exploitable or not. If they are not exploitable, this is like, let's prioritize it for me. And the next step, uh, what I'd be doing, I would check if they has a fix or no. If this, if the vulnerability has a fix, um, yeah, I would go to my development team, uh, send them the version of the package that fixed the vulnerability and ask them uh, to fix this. This is, can be via pure request or just via reporting. Uh, yeah. Uh, on the other side, if uh, this is something that is uh, in use, exploitable, and I don't have a fix for it, so, uh, my um, my strategy will be um, to uh, solicit the threat detection the threat detection team and try to mitigate uh, the risk. Um, the second pattern is container image signing. So actually, we are we wanted to fight against image tampering. Um, I wanted to be able uh, and make sure that we are uh, deploying images that coming from a trusted source. And the benefits behind this that you get. Uh, you get the images that are from trusted source. You make sure that you are, there is no like images coming from a known source, and you are implementing a kind of handover uh, from development to production. So, first of all, the step will be like developer iterating over like a dev, a dev registry, development registry. Uh, when they get a version that uh, they are ready for QA, uh, they will sign the image uh, and they will push this to a QA registry. And from there, uh, we know that the QA team will be able uh, to deploy this based on the origin plus the registry. So if it's something not coming from the development team, it will not be deployed to the QA uh, cluster. Once the QA team uh, do the job, they, what they will do, they will sign the image and uh, then they will push it to a prod registry um, and um, the operator or like uh, the SRE that are looking after the prod uh, will be able only to pull images from this registry and sign it from the QA team. So um, if there is someone who is trying to deploy image from outside, uh, it will not work. So this is something that uh, really important to make sure that there is a safe handover uh, through the, your uh, um, CI/CD pipeline. Um, the other pattern is uh, gatekeeper pattern or admission controller. 
the, um, the idea behind this is that I would like, uh, before deploying any workload or uh, deploying any configuration or um, any managed service instance, any managed service, uh, to make sure that I'm not deploying uh, vulnerable images or images from untrusted source, um, to make sure that I'm not I'm not like harming my my environment. So. Um, I would like maybe to make a decision based on image scan status, if the image is vulnerable or not. Uh, the signing status is coming from trusted tools and from the right team for this right um, um, Kubernetes um, instance. And um, I would like as well maybe to check the provenance of the image. So we have like a multi-choice, we can take one of them or uh, we can combine of them and of course, uh, you need to make some exception. One of the famous exception, if you have like some um, some workloads that are running as daemon set, that are agent and are mandatory for the platform, or a kind of like if you are running a service mesh and you have the invoice sidecar which is vulnerable, you don't wanna like to stop deploying uh, the sidecar because by stop deploying the sidecar, you will like block your, 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 your like environment. So this is one of the things that you need to think about, like managing, uh, manage exception for those, um, uh, for those um, uh, workloads that are um, mandatory for your, uh, your production. Um, yeah, the next um, pattern is uh, to use base image and layer analysis. Um, one of the famous that you can start with is uh, using the Red Hat ecosystem. Uh, catalog and by the way you can get updated images plus coming from trusted source they are um, updated regularly and the second uh, option is um, to uh, start or like uh, uh, best practice is to start with a minimal base image you can see here that I'm, I'm, I'm scanning this uh, docker uh, image node um, with this version and I see here that I have like 15 critical vulnerability uh, plus uh, one uh, 53 high. When I'm moving from this version to the slim one, you can see here that um, I'm reducing my surface of attack or like my vulnerability exposure from 15 to one for critical and from one 53 to three for high. So this is something that if you can use those uh, like slim images, um, yeah, uh, it will be uh, something that you reduce your uh, attack surface, help you to reduce your attack surface. Um, uh, another thing that it's, um, when you use like a base uh, image, you can see here, for example, that they have this base image that uses in a bunch of uh, workloads and there is a vulnerability there that being uh, fixed, for example, here in version 1.2. Um, it's easy here like to rebuild my these images with the new version. Uh, by the way, I'm fixing a bunch of images. So this is one of the best practices that, that you can use. And usually like uh, teams, uh, especially like platform teams, they will uh, provide a subset or a set of images that uh, they are mandatory. So developer cannot like start from an image from internet, but hey, this is my image for Java, for Node, for, and so on. Um, yeah, the next pattern is to implement a continuous CSPM. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to assess in uh, an iterative way uh, all the misconfiguration and address as, uh, them as well in an automated way. So, and uh, from there, I can uh, do a kind of drift detection and suggest remediation. So um, how this is work, we have a kind of like um, CSPM, KSPM capability that is running with my uh, cloud accounts. Uh, from there, I'm continuously uh, assessing the risk. When I find something that is um, uh, weighted, um, I'm, I'm, pull, I'm opening a pull request to my infrastructure as a code uh, security uh, GitHub, and uh, then um, I'm asking uh, those guys responsible for this part of code um, to, to fix it at, uh, at source. So the idea here is that you can like apply a, a quick patch on, the, on your infrastructure, but the problem if there is a new deployment, they will uh, erase this patch. So the idea that you get the loop and the next time uh, the team deploy uh, a new version, this has come with the fix that you have suggested. Um, yeah, how is this working from risk assessed and prioritization? I have a list of inventory, then I'm evaluating my, uh, my, uh, my, my uh, assets, then prioritize them based on the risk. 
and then I'm suggesting a kind of remediation. So it's, it will be either um, I'm doing an autofix because it's high critical and I'm applying a patch, um, or um, I'm, I'm adding this to my to-do list and maybe opening a pull request and send them back to uh, developer or platform engineer. So uh, let's move uh, now to the uh, persona and uh, workflows. We'll go through this persona and then uh, we go, uh, we'll see in details how yeah, you implement uh, those workflows for uh, the best practices that we just exposed. Um, yeah, first of all, we have the developer, which is like, usually is, uh, is building like source, uh, yeah, secure application and fixes vulnerability that coming back from production. Um, we have the platform engineer, uh, DevOps and DevSecOps. This is like a kind of similar roles, but it depends, like change from our organization uh, to another, and they are mainly uh, looking at building uh, a platforms using infrastructure as a code, uh, continuous uh, integration and continuous deployment, um, as well policy implementation coming from security architects. On the security uh, persona, we have mainly security engineer um, who is working in close uh, with the security architect, and they are responsible mainly for uh, defining um, um, policies um, and uh, compliance plus trade modeling. And we have the SecOps, which is uh, looking after the runtime and he's handling uh, trade detection and forensics. And finally, we have the CISO, who's just like getting like the score number at a high level. Um, yeah, here we can see like um, how these persona are, uh, are going through the different life cycles. So, most of them, like the DevOps guys, will be bet between deploy and, uh, and run, and SecOps mainly on the uh, incident response and forensics. And of course, the security architect tried, like to have like a kind of recommendation through the different phases. Um, yeah, the first thing that you can implement is like to put um, a scan on the CI phase. Like I'm, I'm just building my application here, and then I'm running a scan. If, if I'm, I'm failing my, my policies or I'll, I'll be sending back the image, I will not push it to a, a registry. If this is part, I will just push it to registry and then I will be able to deploy it. So um, this is um, actually um, the first uh, stage in vulnerability assessment. And we can combine this uh, with a registry scanner. And why we are combining this with the registry scanner, because we can bypass the CI CD first. Not all, not all the teams will be uh, using a CI CD pipeline. Uh, sometimes you have images that are coming from partners and they are coming from vendors, so they, they are not coming through your CI CD pipeline. So actually what we are doing, we are uh, continuously uh, scanning the registry and uh, we can uh, as well add an extra step here, which is um, every time I'm pulling an image from a public uh, Git repository or from a partner or a vendor, I will uh, scan this, uh, um, this, this image before pushing it to my corporate registry. So this is kind of a workflow that you can implement to make sure that all the images that are uh, um, in your registry, they are up to date, plus um, having uh, those images scanned when it comes uh, from public uh, sources. Uh, the second thing that you can add here is the workload identity um, um, and integrity. And here it's mainly about signing images. So I'm getting this picture in big picture here. So what you are doing, uh, once you, you, you get uh, the image in your registry, you will apply a sign-in process. So in a national, uh, you have um, uh, the public, uh, the private key, which is signing um, the image. So you have the image uh, signed with uh, the private key, and then you have the public key that is running and uh, pulling and running with the cluster. So once you wanted to deploy an image, and then you have this public key on the cluster, you can uh, verify the orange, uh, the origin of the image. Uh, on the other side, if uh, there is someone who is trying to push image that is not uh, um, signed, then he get he got rejected. Um, so how it's working, he, um, we have the admission controller um, that is checking the scan status and the signature here. And uh, from here, you can see that I can solicit like um, the scanning result, or I can go and check the, um, uh, check the, the signature status. Um, on the other side, this is on the 
pre-built. On the other side, if, if you are in the runtime, uh, you would like to uh, discover um, zero-day vulnerability uh, in running images. So you need to have this kind of uh, continuous assessment of workload running in the runtime. And how it's working, uh, usually you deploy a kind of a daemon set uh, that is running with your hostess, and this is uh, assess the vulnerability on the running container part hostess. And then you're reporting this uh, back, either you send this to your team or you, you open a ticket for the team that is responsible for this specific image. Um, infrastructure as a code security, uh, we have seen the vulnerability part on the top, so uh, the second part will be uh, around uh, scanning my uh, artifacts that's coming with the uh, with the platform, uh, mainly uh, Helm charts, YAML files for Kubernetes, and Terraform cloud formation and so on for cloud resources. Uh, so um, I have like a kind of two uh, parallel build, uh, parallel uh, fair stages that are work here. Uh, from this perspective, I'm taking uh, the infrastructure uh, source repository. I'm scanning it. Uh, if this is fail, I will immediately uh, um, notify uh, the developer or the platform engineer and tell him, hey, uh, you need to fix this before going to the next step. Uh, if this is okay, I will merge this uh, to my main branch or master branch, and then I'll be able uh, to deploy um, to deploy my, uh, my infrastructure as a code. So actually, um, what we are doing here, you are blocking uh, the vulnerability as source. You are not allowing this vulnerability to go uh, to production. But this is, doesn't prevent someone, uh, someone from uh, changing um, some configuration uh, in the runtime. So if you get um, this configuration changed by someone through UI, CLI, and so on, uh, you can implement a kind of drift detection here. And from there, uh, what you are doing, you are getting uh, this drift detection, um, and then you are um, opening a pull request. And from the pull request, um, the DevOps guy uh, will, will review that and merge it. And by closing the loop here, we'll be able to make sure that uh, this has been uh, embedded in a source of truth, which is uh, my Git repository for infrastructure. Um, that's all from me today. Um, two key takeaways. Uh, the first thing um, that cloud native security implementation is a team and collaboration matter. Uh, we saw through the persona that there is like a different um, uh, responsibility that is spread uh, through different teams. So you have to build this like a relationship and you have to make it um, uh, automated and traceable. Uh, one of the best uh, practice is to use infrastructure as a code plus uh, GitOps because you will be able uh, to track everything and track the history of all the changes. And um, the second thing, um, cloud native security should be adopted gradually. What I mean by that, uh, depending on what stage you are in, uh, some guys, they are uh, having their workloads going to production, so they will be looking after mainly threat detection. Uh, those who are uh, still in early stage, uh, they will be uh, looking after implementing uh, security at early stage, ship left, and so on. So um, you cannot like implement everything uh, within one shot. So start by the most important use cases uh, for your business. Um, yeah, I put uh, uh, further uh, slides here uh, for reading um, CNAP Cloud Security um, a blog from Sysdig. Uh, there is a Bosk uh, podcast uh, from Anabelek from uh, on the Google uh, Cloud Security podcast. Uh, some yeah, some reading from Gartner and uh, Dimitri Attack for, for for containers, and you can find as well for Kubernetes. So that's all from me today. Uh, thank you very much very much for being here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm open to any question. Uh, be as well on Cystic booth. So just stop me and ask me. And please don't forget uh, to rate the session and provide your your feedback. Thank you very much. Thank you.